Golio, something like that. I guess I'm pronouncing that. Oman Golio. Okay. Now I got that done. This is hard. It says, Dear Brother West, with the good word of God, <coughs> I am able to write you this letter. This is due to my appreciation letter I wrote to Antioch Ministries in regard. See, that's a ministry that I gave permission to use our tapes in any foreign field, in any foreign land they wanted to use them free of charge. Lots of people try to charge. There's what, see, some singing groups that come here, they won't let you tape because they don't want to lose that dollar. <laughs> right. Amen. But it uh, don't matter to me. Just get the word out. Don't matter who's preaching this so it gets out. But anyway... It says, I wrote to Antioch Ministry in regards to your crusade video cassette, which you authorized to be mailed to Christian clients around the world. I want to tell you that I was so happy to receive your address from the ministry of Antioch by his wife, Jacqueline. In reference to your video cassette, this is this, this really touched my heart. I wept when I, I read it first time. In reference to your video cassette, well, I want to say God has used you to promote his work and your ministry. You really preach well. It goes on. I don't want much of my stuff in there. I just want to read what he says about the message. When I played it on, in my church during my crusade day, over 300 souls gave their life to Jesus. says, I want to also inform you that the brother in a wheelchair on your video cassette, his songs were also touching. Isn't that wonderful? So God's been good to us. He's blessed. He's had the church. Now, is there anybody here tonight that's never been in one of our meetings before, never been in one of our services first time? God bless you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Eight and verse 19. That's where I'm going to begin.
club packing men. We've got here not many hit baptized. When they come to, they be ready. Yeah. You know, it just don't work that way. So we're going to tell you the truth tonight, and I, I beseech you by the loving kindness and tender mercies of Jesus Christ to receive what I say. The man standing before you tonight is no good. In me, that is in my flesh, there is no good thing. Amen. I do not pedestalize myself. I do not exalt myself. I exalt him. Amen. I have no righteousness of my own. I have no holiness of my own. Only what he has imparted to me. And if you get a hold of this knowledge, please listen to the old preacher tonight. If you get a hold of this knowledge and this truth that God has instructed me and told me to preach, you can walk out of here totally condemnation and guilt free. Amen. And know that everything's all right. It's under the blood of the Lamb. Somebody praise God. Send your little hands up to Jesus. Let's pray, Father. In your gracious name, Lord Jesus, tonight, I pray that you will move in this place. I plead your blood over this congregation. We have come here from probably 10 or 12 states, maybe some states I didn't even mention, Lord, I don't know. But God, tonight, I ask you to help me, and I plead the blood that you shed over every one of us in this building tonight. For it is that blood that redeemed us and set us free. I ask you, God, to anoint me with thine own self, with that anointing I had with you before the world was. Send forth that anointing. Touch each and every heart, every person. And I give you praise, and I give you glory, and I give you honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody that loves the Lord, please say amen. amen. Now, I want, before I preach tonight, before you start the recorders, John, Jesus has raised from the dead. He has met his apostles in an appointed mountain. Verse 16 on down. Matthew 28, 16 on down says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. He had told them, apparently, meet me here. Amen. How many of you believe he keeps his appointment? Amen. He don't let a little old thing like death hinder it. Amen. Come on, church. Right. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. We got a few of them here. Come on. We got some that'll worship and some that doubt. Amen. And some the chat. Amen. And some the pout. <laughs> Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Now that says it. Right. If all power is given to him, then he's the only one got power. Power. Unless he gets Go ye therefore. See what he was doing? He was showing them that he had the authority, the position, the power, the authenticity to send them with something that the world needed. Go ye therefore. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. There's a great controversy across America, all over the world for that matter, as to the correct method and formula of water baptism. I preached to you last night how that Paul taught us not to be contentious over it. Amen. Oh. Not to fall out and be quarrelsome. Oh. Amen. 
But you need to be taught. Amen. You need to humble yourself as a little child. You know, I've been here come all the way about 40 years. You need to humble yourself, hardhead. Amen. And become as a little child. A little child will sit in a school desk and learn. Amen. And that's what we need to do. We need to learn. When Jesus said this, he was speaking to his apostles, to the eleven. Amen. Sending them with the Great Commission. He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. He that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. There's something about baptism that I don't think the most people know what it symbolizes, what it signifies, the importance of it, where it puts you, what it gives you, and the standing it gives you in the kingdom of God. There's a lot of people have never taken the time to learn what it means, to learn its significance. Most people are ashamed when they do get down and find out what it means. They're ashamed or their religious denomination or affiliation will not let them do what they learn they should do. And consequently, here I am, back here in the mountains of West Virginia, and I have people that come from 15 states just to be baptized. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want to show you a comparison and an illustration. I've had people make the statement to me, and I want to say this so you can understand it. I'm going to take my time. I've had them make statements over the years that Simon Peter and Paul and Philip and those apostles in those days went totally against what Jesus commanded in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. There are those who say it doesn't make any difference, but that's not true either. Amen. It does make a difference. Amen. I personally do not know how God's going to judge those people that did not have the light on it because they were blinded by the leadership that wouldn't preach it. Amen. So I leave that to him and would rather give them the benefit of the doubt and say they had to walk by the life they had. But when you come to the knowledge of it, when you sit or stand in the presence of a prophet that declares the truth and doesn't back down and doesn't compromise, then you will be required that you have to stand in the judgment for it and give God an account of why you were ashamed to do it after you found out that it was real and that it was right. I felt something hit me in the top of the head and go through my very soul and body. Immersion in water is more important than most people think it is. It signifies everything that God did for you. Amen. I mean, some of you are going to be shocked tonight and tomorrow night when you find out, and I'll just scratch the surface of it, when you find out all that God has done for you. Amen. And what legal standing you have. What spiritual rights you've obtained. Come on, come on. You know, before West, I feel so that don't make no difference. If it's legal, it's yours. Right. Yeah. 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 Your feelings messed up. Yeah. If you're under the blood and the devil's telling you you can't make it, your feelers messed up. Yeah. I know a lot of people got their feelers messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to preach tonight. Yeah. If you get this water tonight, you'll know something. <laughs> when Jesus commanded this, now listen closely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, here comes.
found Simon Peter on the day of Pentecost standing up there. He spoke by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost and by the Spirit of truth. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody on earth who will deny that? Is there anybody that would deny that Simon Peter didn't speak by the Spirit of truth? He stood up on the day of Pentecost and declared when the, he was asked by the people, thousands of them that gathered in, what must we do? Amen. Peter said, repent. Yes. And that means to be sorry for the sin of your life. Amen. Amen. Come on. And to be sorry that Jesus had to take that sin yes. for you. Amen. This. <clears throat> Bring that sin to Jesus in repentance. The moment you bring it to him, some of you are not going to like this. But the blood which has not gone to the water, the blood went to the Spirit. Yeah. 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 That's right. It was the blood of God. Yeah. Yeah. It was the blood of God. Yeah. We're not dealing with some man behind a, a veil talking through a little door. Amen. We're dealing with a high priest and a king who is king of kings and lord of lords. When Simon stood there and was asked that question, what must we do? He said, repent. That means to be sorry for your sin. See, he had preached a message to them that had pricked their heart. Oh, 
mind. They said, unto John's baptism. Amen. So their baptism was in respect to John. But Jesus said, when you get baptized, or when you baptize, I want you to baptize them with respect to the name of the Father. Oh, 
him having his father's name in their foreheads. What is that name? It has to be Jesus. It's not God. It's not Lord. It's not Christ. It's not Father. It's not Son. It's not Holy Ghost. It is the name that is above every name. It is the name of Jesus. Oh, I It really doesn't matter what people think about I'm too far gone anyhow. <laughs> everything pertaining to salvation, everything pertaining to baptism deals with the death and resurrection of Jesus. Yes, When you go down in that water, you had better be understanding and knowing whose name you are respecting. That's what the original translations mean. Amen. With respect to what? With respect to whom? Amen. When you are immersed, when you are baptized, you are supposed to be doing it in respect and in significance of the one to whom it pertains. Amen. Too simple for you tonight? Anybody got a Bible in the barn? Open it to Colossians chapter 2. Real quick, I've got to have it fast. God, yours looks like mine. Wrote, written all over. Colossians chapter 2, this is this. God sends a big beware. In verse 8, it says, Beware lest any man spoil or ruin you through philosophy and vain deceit. Amen. God, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. See, this thing is in respect to Christ, amen. to Jesus. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. For in him, here, here, this, this God is sending through Paul, the Apostle Paul's teachings. He is, send, he is sending the authority by which he is going to send the, the salvation that the world needs. Amen. God backs it up with his power and his authority. Listen. Amen. For in him dwelleth the fullness, listen to this, all the fullness of the Godhead body, which gives Jesus the right to demand the respect for the name of the Father and of the Son. Hallelujah. And of the Holy Ghost. Do you think Peter totally violated and rebelled against what Jesus said? No, he obeyed what he said. He spake in respect to the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Ghost. Come on, church. Are you still with me? And ye are complete in him, which Amen. is the head of all principality and power. Amen. He is giving you the reason why you had better believe in his name. Amen. Listen to this. And what that name demands as far as respect. Amen. God have mercy. 
in whom also ye are circumcised, listen to this, with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. It is Satan there that by baptism, now listen to this real close, by immersion into his death, listen to this, now I'm going to show you some things in Romans, immersion into his death brings you into the circumcision made without hands. And you that were of the Gentiles and the uncircumcision become the circumcision because your sins have been nailed to the tree in his flesh body. Well, here we go. Listen to this. Buried with him in baptism. Paul also taught us and told us that we were crucified with him. Amen. Well, I'm getting some looks. Can't see half of you, but I know I am. <laughs> Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him, listen to this, through the faith of the operation of God. It's God's operation, not yours. Amen. It's God's word, not yours. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Mm. Who hath raised him from the dead. And you, listen to this, you, everybody say me. Me. Oh, come on. I'm going to pop you one. Everybody say me. Me. Turn around and look somebody tells that this is talking about me. And you, listen to this, being dead, being dead in your sins, being dead in your sins, God, and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him. <laughs> Having, listen to this, and pack your ditty bag, huff and puff, because you have it. Listen to this. Having forgiven you, Darrell, let's say, that's me. Oh, come on. Darrell, let's say, that's me. That's me. Having forgiven you all, if I say all, all, that means conclusive everything, all of them. Amen. Having forgiven you all trespasses. The handwriting of ordinances that was against us. He blotted them out. Amen. Don't worry about it. It's blotted out. It'll never turn up on you. Amen. Your slate's clean. Amen. Your life's clean. Amen. Yeah, but you know what I've done. Your slate's clean. Amen. You're under the blood. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Turn around and tell somebody that's me. Amen. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. Some of you look at me really straight. <laughs> Nailing it to his cross. <laughs> and having spoiled principalities. And powers, he made a show of them openly, trying up and over them in it. Oh, as it goes on, I won't read this. But let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, and that's what we're doing. Did you see him? He mowed his yard on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a knock a dog, never go to him, you go to him. That's right. <laughs> Come Pharisee who don't even know it. Amen. Here comes a man down the road healed, carrying his bed. Yeah. Just been laying beside my pool. Uh -huh. Amen. You want know the church wanted to know? Watch if you carrying your bed on Sunday. That's right. They didn't care whether he got healed or not. Watch you get him I'm 
get excited. Yeah. Turn your Romans! <laughs> Chapter 6. <laughs> I feel good because the devil's gone. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Listen to this. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer there? Listen to me. Some of you don't understand this. Honey, when you go under that blood, when you get set free by the blood of Jesus, you are dead to sin. Yes. Legally, in the eyes of God, oh, I know someone's running around here trying to find their word to fall apart. And face look like Balaam's mute. Right, amen. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. I'm doing my best. I'm going to make it. Amen. 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 Yes, I make mistakes. I get tried and tested in storms and temptation. I do two twice as much as you. So what else you got to talk about? Come on. Right. Amen. Come on. Right. I know this much. I'm not going through those gates by my abilities and my knowledge or my holiness and my righteousness. I'm going through because he made it possible for me to be dead to sin.
then you're going to make mistakes and there's not a one of you that happens. But before you make it, I want to tell you, before you make it, you had an advocate. You had a propitiation. You had a go-between. You had somebody that had it took care of. Somebody that took you out from under the law, nailed the law to the tree. I feel the Holy Ghost. And when there's no law, there's no transgression. And when he forgives you, he forgives you. I don't care if people may not forgive you, but God does. You may not forgive yourself, but God does. Somebody say amen. I said, somebody say amen. This is it. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Listen to this. Here's what I wanted to say. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Amen. Thank you. Jesus had to die. Amen. His death is of the utmost importance. Amen. When he came out of the grave, he wanted it well understood that he was bringing the Father into this covenant. Amen. Come on. He was closing the door. He had already fulfilled the law, abolished it, nailed it to the tree. Amen. And that he had by legal right in death, through death, separated himself, totally free now, from the old woman Israel that he'd been married to. Amen. Well, <laughs> On the cross, the marriage was made void. And no. He came out of that grave with his arms open to whosoever will become his bride. And had issued orders to the apostles to teach the world, to train the world. of his tremendous plan of salvation. Yes. Amen. That it's not joining a church. Come on, right. It's not splitting off and building your own building. Amen. Come on. It's not getting mad and quarrelsome and contentious. Amen. But it's following the legal procedures. Yeah. And know that you are guaranteed by the authority of the authenticity and the power I wish somebody would say amen. Yes, sir. That's the truth. All right. Why did Peter tell them to be immersed in Jesus' name? Because he knew the covenant belonged to Jesus. Amen. He knew that Jesus demanded Respect unto the Father. Amen. And Jesus said, I'm coming his name, so it must be Jesus. We know the Son's name is Jesus. His name is called the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And Jesus spoke by John's writings and said, when the Comforter or the Holy Ghost has come, he is coming in my name. Amen. So it is Jesus, one, two, three, come on. Amen. was that I want you to remember that this thing was ordained by the power of the Father and His name. It was brought to the world in the revelation body of the Son. But I'm going away, and I'll be with you always, but don't forget that there's something else you're going to receive. And it is coming in the authority and respect of my name. I'm here to tell you, honey, for His name. He will do most anything you ask him to do. In fact, there's a place you can come to in God that if you ask anything in Jesus' name, he will do it. That's why there's so many people across this nation that are doing everything they can to turn people away from the name of Jesus because all power in heaven and earth is in that name. And if you learn to respect it and how to use it and how to give honor to it, devils will tremble because the
There's respect to a name. Listen, those men that he found there in that 19th chapter of the book of Acts, it didn't really mean that they had been and John baptized them. Well, that's what shocked some of you. I used to think John baptized them, but I'm not so sure now. Because Paul said, to what were you baptized? They said, I'm to John's baptism. Amen. Come on. John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, not into unto. Unto. Signify. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Templify. There's one coming after me who's father than I. Whose shoe like says, I'm not worth it loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and the fire. Watch this closer. Watch this closer. What John's doing here in the anointing of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, which he was full of before he was born. He is tying closely. His simplification and baptism in water, which represents cleansing and washing. To a baptism deeper than that. The Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I'm coming to send fire upon you. And what will I if it be kindled already? He said, I have a baptized or baptism to be baptized with. One day, the son of Zebedee, James and John, came to Jesus and said, Lord, do something for us. What, what we were going to ask you, do something special for us. Oh, he said, what would you want me to do? They said, we want one of us to sit on one side and the other on the other side of you. One on the left, one on the right side of you. In your kingdom. Maybe the other ten matter in the horn and they all got jealous. That's right. Listen. He said, I have a baptism to be baptized with and I have a cup to drink. He said, are you able to be baptized with a baptism I'm to be baptized with? Amen. Are you able to drink? We said, you will you will be baptized with that baptism. You want that baptism, Mark? Listen to me, please. It was the baptism of death. That's right. 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 Amen. Right. It was. Truth. Hallelujah. Amen. It was when he would be placed into death. Amen. It was the baptism of death. The cup he drunk was death. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to show you tonight, beyond the shadow of a doubt, why it's important that you have this knowledge. Some of you in this building and all the country trying to find you a church and don't preach and you're doing yourself an injustice. You need to be taught these truths and these principles. Amen. It'll give you a position of power with God. Let me tell you something. It'll do it. It'll take you and make you realize you never could have done it. You never would have been able to do it. It never was. You never will be. You was always him. You can't ordain or you can't order your own footsteps. You can't forgive your own sins. You can't get your own sin up to heaven. You can't straighten your own life and heart up. It takes him. And the only way you can get him to do it is to have knowledge of him and receive what he said about you. You can feel rotten, low down, no good, unworthy, unkind, whatever. Just keep on on name. Let me tell you what he said. You're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. You're a citizen on a hill that cannot be hit. You are kings and priests of God. You're not what men say you are. You're what God says you are. And you have what God says you have, no matter what religious bylaws say across this nation, in denominational affiliation, it doesn't matter what their bylaws say. One set of bylaws here rules out a thousand of you, and a set of bylaws over there tells a million across the nation they're going to hell. And bylaws have separated us, names over the door have separated us and, and put us apart. But let me tell you something in that baptism of death, in that place that Jesus was talking about, it is where we would be put in likeness and together be immersed into that death. You know what? As many of us have been baptized into Christ and put on Christ. As many of us that have been baptized and buried with him, we have been buried into that death. What? Into that baptism. Thank God a typification and a signification of something spiritual. Let me tell you what it does. I don't care how mean you've been. I don't care what you've done. When you go down into that and you show the world by an act of faith and going down into that immersion in that water and come out of there and doing that in respect God has to look at you and say by faith it is something that he said in order and hell can't stop it. If you don't feel goosebumps for once a year, it's still the power of God and it'll keep you free and keep you happy and keep you out from under condemnation.
in the gift.
freed him from what he had become. Death freed him from what he had become. He had become my sin. He'd become your sin. He'd become everything that you and I had become. He became sin for us. He was made sin for us. And when he died, he was automatically, legalistically released from that. He was free from it. And for three days, he just laid there. For three days, he just laid there. While in the heart of the earth, in hell, if you please, in the prisons, he was stripping the devil of his power. He was taking the authority, the keys of hell and death away from Satan. While the body that had our sin, are you back? sinned but been made sin he still had his holiness he still had his righteousness because he died it freed him from what he had legally become <laughs> so being free from that three days later the spirit came and raised that body up and he walked out Amen. and guess who was freed with him <laughs> Turn and look at somebody and tell them. It was me. He nailed the law to the tree. He nailed everything that was against me to the tree. He nailed it. He blotted it out. He put it in his flesh and hung it on that tree. He became my sin. He became my curse. He became everything that Satan wanted me to remain. When he went into death, he took it with him, and right into death he went. But honey, when you die, you're free from sin. Now, if you're immersed into his death, and you've received his blood, and his blood's applied to you, and you've repented of your sins, then you are dead to sin, and you are free from sin, and you no longer remain in sin.
was a typification of what the washing of the water of the word. Hallelujah. And that was coming through Jesus. Yeah. Under what were you baptized, Paul said. Yeah. Unto John's baptism. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know if John baptized him, but somebody was baptized according to John's teachings. Right. 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 And they were baptized under the name and respect for the name of John. Yeah. But Paul came along and said, wait a minute, there's one greater come along. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to change that. <laughs> We're going to have to go back now. Because he said to receive the Holy Ghost, he said, he said, have you received it since you believe? They said, we didn't hear of it. We don't know anything about it. See, that's why people don't know these things. I'm telling you tonight. Yeah. Amen. Because Amen. they don't stay around long enough to learn. Come on. Amen. That's why it doesn't matter who jumps up in my face, condemns, points fingers, or whatever. I'm free. Amen. I can smile yeah. and be free. Because there's not a man on earth got the power to take away my freedom. That's right. Come on. That's right. That's right. Come on. I don't live under condemnation. That's right. Amen. I have storms. I have battles. I have trials and temptations and hardships, don't you? Yeah. But I'm never without mercy. I'm always free. I never lose. I always win. Amen. 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 Respect to the name of the Father and the Son. And it pertains to the respect of that name and death signified by the Holy Ghost, the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now listen. That's why Peter did not go against Jesus. Amen. He baptized in the name of Jesus. He baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on now. Come on. That's why Paul deemed it necessary to tell them. In a diplomatic way, he was saying this. You haven't heard about the Holy Ghost, but you've been baptized unto respect for John. That's what it means. Whether you know that or not. Under John's baptism, he took them down and immersed them again in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they came out of that water speaking in tongues, baptized in the Holy Ghost because the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are far off. It is the Lord our God. Right. Now don't look at me. I told you these things don't be spoken to you. I've heard before. That don't make me smart because I'm not. The man standing before you is nothing. Just a little vessel with a little heaven's treasure. Yes. Amen. You give it all away for me. Yes. Amen. Somebody said, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Been immersed into his death. Buried with him into his death. Are you hearing me? Amen. This should really take root and take hold in your heart and in your life because as you're buried into his death and because of his death, if he's freed, you're freed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. If you have come under the blood, if you have come under the blood, and gone into his death in that watery grave. You're saying to the world by an action of faith, I'm going down in respect to the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus. Amen. When you are put in that watery grave, you are placed into the, the, the place of death that has respect to the name. Amen. What name? The name of he that went into that place and had power to come back out of it. Why did he have power to come back out of it? Because when he died, he became free from what he'd become. Amen. The next time the world sees him, he's coming without sin. Amen. Does anybody here understand what I'm saying? Come on here just a minute. All right, when you're placed into his death, you are placed in 
in a situation legally and spiritually where you pass because he has risen from the dead, you pass from death to life. Yes. Amen. You come out, your body, you live your normal life, your body, you go through your normal life. This old man passes away. Yes. Old things pass away. Your life becomes new. You yes. begin to walk in what the Word says you've received. Yes. Come on. Amen. Now, listen, please, don't misunderstand me. Water baptism don't give all that to you. It signifies when you do it that you know you've done receiving. Amen. See, being baptized into his death in that watery grave is only a typification. That is a spiritual thing. Yes, amen. He is typifying, signifying a spiritual thing by a natural action to show the world by an act of faith that it is God's doing. Amen. God did it. Amen. amen. Come on, church. Amen. That's why today the name of Jesus is fought so hard. That's why when I go to this water tonight, I will not immerse anyone any other way except in Jesus' name. Amen. Because that signifies that I respect the covenant. And to whom the covenant pertains and the agreement between the two parties of that covenant. All right? I'm attached to him. I become one with him. Amen. Through repentance and the blood and the washing of the water of the word. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. All right? I become one with him. I become part of his body, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, called by his name. I become part of the family of God. And when I go into that watery grave, I should be able to say by knowledge that I am going down in that grave where he went. Spiritually. And I am leaving all that I was there. I am dying with him. I am dead to sin. I am buried. I'm not going to have the preachers that stand by my side, the people that stand with me right now, you're thinking they just go somewhere and grab them out, throw them in a water, hold them baptized them in Jesus' name, they're saved. Right. And they let them go to hell because they need to know what's going on. Right. They need to know what they're going down. They need to know what they represent. They need to know what it's signifying. They need to know why it's the name because it respects the one to whom the covenant pertains. The testator, the propitiation, the advocate, the mediator, the go-between. The one to whom we give honor. And I'll tell you this. If you're ashamed of that, I don't care. They can baptize you to the water dogs know your name. And you'll never make it. But if you went to God in an altar and went to that water and realizing now, as you learn, see, you may not even know all of it when you do, but as you learn, you begin to say, all that he has given me, I signified that I received it, became the heir of it and the receiver of it because I went into his death. And I was able to come back out of there because I was released from my sins. I am free from sin. Amen. Amen. Now listen to me. Now when I went away, she went so long time, 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 can give me the day. I just give up condemnation all the time. I know, don't I'm going to knock that devil from a cross pit in tonight. I'll be with the chapter of Romans. God said, there is therefore now no condemnation. Yeah. Turn around and somebody in the eye and say, no condemnation. No. <laughs> to them which are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. You follow the spirit, not the flesh. That's this. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed me from the law of sin and death. Took me into that law of sin and death in that grave. Brought me out. 
and I am afraid. It doesn't matter what anybody says about you or me. If we know where we've been, if we know what we got when we went there, it don't matter what they say. It shouldn't matter what they say. It shouldn't matter what Satan says. Come on, just to make this sense. You know why? Because there is no condemnation to them that are his. You say, yeah, but I made a mistake. Who hasn't? Well, I failed. Who did? I just can't forgive myself. That's your problem. He has you not. Amen. Come on, church. Listen to this preacher just a minute, please, as I close. There's a lot of people across this nation, all over the world, whose lives are caught in traps. Honey. Amen. Sometimes victims of circumstances and situations. How many of you believe that Jesus can take care of it all? Amen. Amen. We in our religious denominal affiliation and sometimes our traditional upbringing and our traditions that make God's word of no effect. See, that's us doing that. Right. Sometimes it's been our upbringing. Sometimes it's the way we've been religiously taught that keeps us under a bondage that we're not supposed to be under. Yes. Right. Keeps us under a condemnation that we're not supposed to have. The word condemnation means declared guilty. But Jesus said if you've been buried in, in death with him, God taught us through Paul's teachings and writings that if you're buried with him in baptism, then you are freed from sin. That you're no longer the servant of sin. And listen, where there's no law, how many of you believe that God nailed that law to the tree? Where there's no law, there's no record of sin. When God sees you go under that blood, oh Lord, thank God for that blood. When God sees you go in repentance under that blood, and then you turn and by knowledge, it takes knowledge to understand what I'm saying here tonight. In respect and honor to the name of his Father, which always was Jesus. Amen. We know that Son's name was Jesus. Amen. And that Holy Ghost came in his name. Amen. Then when we go to that water, now listen, there's a lot of people hung up and they fight and quarrel and they argue over whether you ought to put Christ and Lord on it. The angel didn't say his name shall be Lord Jesus or Jesus Christ. The angel didn't name him Lord Jesus Christ. The angel said his name shall be called Jesus. So his name is Jesus. Lord is not his first name. Jesus his middle name. Christ his last name. His name first and foremost and complete is Jesus. Somebody say amen. Now he is Lord and he is Christ now. Once he based the authenticity and the authority of this, it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. You may not like this. You may not believe this. But in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He had the right to ordain and appoint this covenant. He had the right to fulfill and abolish the old, take it and make it to the tree, go into death, and in death become free from what he had become for us, the curse and sin, come back out. That's what brought him back out. <laughs> That's why he was allowed to come back out, <laughs> because he became free from that. Somebody said, praise the Lord. And he came back out of that grave, and when he came out of that grave, he came out for me, and he came out for you. That you don't have to walk down through life with a newness of life, with a sad look on your face right. and a long face and a drooped shoulder and feeling so bad because the whole world listen. If you're trying to get heaven on your righteousness, you're in poor shape. Amen. But if you get there by his righteousness, if you know where your righteousness comes from, if you know who gave you your holiness, and if you know who paid the penalty and met the demands for you, and you put all of your trust in bull right down the trust, you put all of your trust in it. Then no one will have to preach water baptism 52 Sundays a year. Right. If you learn what it gives you and what it signifies, see it signifies and typifies what you have already legally and spiritually received because of Jesus' sacrifice, propitiation, his advocacy, Amen. everything. And when you go down, as you go down, then you'll start learning more. You'll think, my 
God, I received that. I've already got that. I didn't know. It's like going down the road hungry and you don't know you got any money and open your pocket and there's a thousand dollars and you didn't have to be hungry anymore. Amen. Amen. Jesus paid the penalties. Amen. He's legally met the demands. But if you're ashamed to have respect unto his name, he said, if you're ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you. He died a shameful death. He became a curse and became sin, but he came out of that grave. And he's coming again without sin. Amen. If you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. And I'll be the person that knows the truth and wants the truth, that comes to the knowledge of the truth, will respect the name. Amen. Because salvation, everything Jesus did pertaining to salvation and deliverance comes to you through the man. Amen. And that's because he went into death that he could meet you there. Amen. You understand? Amen. He could meet you in that death. And there when he by death became free from what he had become because of you. Amen. He, he came out and I have raised with you. Amen. Now this is legal things I'm talking about. This is spiritual things. And I'm made to sit with him in heavenly places. Amen. These are legal things. I've already received it. I'm only practicing up here what I'm going to have friends. Amen. I should never walk under guilt again. Amen. The truth. I should never walk under condemnation anymore. Amen. <laughs> because when I do I am limiting what he did for me Amen. I am limiting the power of his blood and his power see God proved the covenant proved his power Amen. He raised him from the dead Amen. 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 Now, please listen to this as I close I often wonder how he became sin, went into the grave and death, and how could God, are you listening back to me there, please? How could God go back into something that had been made sin and bring it out of a place he couldn't go? Right. And this evening, he walked me with it. The moment he died, he became free from what he'd become because of you and me. Sin. And that made him free from it. That means that it's like he never was made sin legally. And yet he had legally been made sin for me and you. And that made it possible for God, the eternal Father, the Spirit, the, the Spirit Word, to go into that place where he had been free because of death. Amen. Back into that body and raise it up back because he's raised because he lives. Amen. Does anybody here understand what I'm saying? Raise your hand from over this feeling. Does anybody here understand what this means? Does anybody understand what it means? Does anybody I made a few notes. I want to read these to you now real quick. I made these for myself. I want to give to you. Baptism means simply washing, cleansing. Baptism shows a willingness to follow or become part of something or someone. That's what it means. Baptism represents many things. It means that you've received God's grace and divine blessing already in your soul and in your heart. Amen. That's what it means. You may not have knowledge of all of it because you don't get it overnight. But as you go along, you should become stronger and square those uncondemnable shoulders back. Yes, amen. And say, devil, who do you think you're messing with? Amen. Amen. 
That's why it's important to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. It signifies that you know you have spiritually, this is this, spiritually been added to the church. This water immersion typifies a spiritual baptism. Amen. It not only typifies a spiritual baptism, there's only one faith, one Lord, one baptism. That baptism is a holy ghost baptism, but it's typified by water. Do you understand that? Amen. It typifies life and death. Listen to this. It typifies becoming one with Jesus. It also typifies dying with Him. Amen. Raising with Him. Amen. And walking in the newness of life with Him. How many understand that tonight? Amen. Listen to this. It also signifies, listen to this, regeneration. And it has to be attached. I wrote this on note for myself. It has to be attached or evidence that regeneration has really taken place must be there. In other words, you have got to repent first. Amen. And then after that, if you make a mistake, you have an advocate. How many times should I forgive, Brother West? How many times should I forgive in a day, Peter said? Seven times enough, Lord, he said under 70 times seven. About 490 times a day. About once every three minutes. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Hey, he's got you covered. Yeah. Turn around and tell somebody, he's got me covered. Yeah. Come on, turn around and tell somebody, he's got me covered. Yeah. I'm covered by the blood. Yeah. Turn around and do something else for me. Turn around and say, I know I look like an angel. <laughs> but sometimes I fail. <laughs> look at him again and say, but he's got me covered. <laughs> Regeneration. Getting generation going. Regeneration. You know what that means? Remember what I preached on that years ago? Regeneration. It means new creation. Re created again. Recreation. New creation. <laughs> Regeneration. Woo! Glory be to God. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And on and on and on. That's what it means. To be immersed. He said, I'm going down into his bed. And there he who was made sin, and because of death is free from sin, takes me into that death, frees me from all my sin. Everybody say, all my sin. All all my sin. sin. Didn't I read it to you tonight? Yes. Yes. Frees me from all my sin. So I die in that grave. I go into that watery grave. I go into his death. And as I am freed from that sin, I can't help it. I just rise. Amen. Praise with him. All these things are legal things. Amen. And now I walk with him. Walk with him means I go in my everyday life with this realization that I am not guilty anymore. I am under the blood. Oh, somebody raise those hands. And praise God. Somebody raise those hands. And praise God. You can attach any religious thing to this you want to. But this is just the way it is. So when they baptized in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus. Christ and Lord are abolition. They are titles. That's what he is. But his name is Jesus. You should never quarrel and fight over the authenticity of one against the other. Because it pleased the Father that in Him should all of it dwell. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, I read it to you tonight. In Him dwelt the fullness of the God. He had bodily gave Him the authority and the power to establish a new covenant to reach out and offer this. You can throw it down if you want to. You don't have to go through it if you don't want to. It's up to you. But you will wish you had. You will be so happy and you'll be made happy eternal if you do it out of your heart. Know it that you are doing it under respect of His name and His death burial, and resurrection. Amen. And because of what he gives you as a believer in what he did. Amen. Lift your hands again. Lord, let your anointing begin to move. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise him. He that believeth in his baptism. Oh, God, what this is going to do for you. Praise you tonight. 
Come on, I want to hear some voices. I'm not, I'm not going to do another thing until I get you right in the morning. I'm finished. Come on, let's Praise him because you are baptized into his death. You are buried with him. You've been freed from sin. Come on, church. Let's praise him in this life. No longer does Satan have the right to make you bow your head in shame. Somebody prays. Someone prays. Give me the key of D and then go to A7 and walk up.
and I bent, rushed and put down, many times, just like you.
something in this tonight? Amen. I want to ask you a qu another question. How many saw something you never knew before? Amen. How many appreciates Jesus yeah. for allowing us the privilege to an act of faith in that to respect and honor his name? Come. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. 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 You got your bad eyes and clothes on, baby? Sweat. <laughs> it's of you. Okay. Now, I simply told you the truth. Now, some of you might want me to take 10 minutes to tell somebody that he'd been baptized. Of course, the way we believe they're all going to hell and we're glad of it. But I, I told you something that ought to make anybody want to reconsider their baptism. <laughs> God told me to do this. This is what God showed me to do. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to preach to suit you. I ain't going to preach to suit my family. I ain't going to preach to suit a board. I'll break that board. Amen. I'm going to preach to please him. I'm going to live my life by what he says I am. I'm going to walk and do what he says I can do. I'm going to be free. I'm going to act free because I am free. Woo! Glory to God! Even when I don't feel it, I still know I'm free! Glory to God! I know I'm free! There's times I don't feel like an American, but I know I am. Tax time, I don't feel like an American. <laughs> Don't make no difference. Feelings don't have anything to do with what I told you tonight. It's knowing the truth. It's learning the ABCs, the one, two, threes. How many got it tonight? Let me see your hands. Give the Lord another hand clap on the I'll well, ask you to do me a favor before I. Here was a man that had a real need. You are here tonight and you've got a real need. Why should you be concerned about what family or friends will think about you being here? Why should you be concerned about what you what they might you think they might think about your being here? Why would you be concerned even why would you be concerned or worried about what people think just so you touch them? What difference does it make? There's a lot of things getting in the way today. Jesus never stopped healing. Something got in people's way. God never stopped delivering. Something got in the way. God never stopped blessing. Something got in the way. Many times it's our fears. The prophet Isaiah said, when fears get in the way. And they get in the way. Many times we get concerned carnally about what our friends are going to think about our newfound relationship with God. It's really hard to break out. And I don't know why I feel like saying this, but it's really hard to break loose from the traditional religious realms and barriers that many of us have been brought up in. It's hard to jump the fence, so to speak. It's hard to make that move toward a God that many times we've been taught doesn't do it anymore. But when you come down to death, you'll try any wonder drug. You'll try any new serum. Lay unconscious in a hospital with tubes and machines attached to you, anything if it's death, anything to possibly help. But here we are tonight, probably eight or ten denominal affiliations represented here. And here we are. And the God of miracles saying that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Men saying he stopped doing it 2,000 years ago.
centuries ago when the apostles died. I say that he's the same. I say he never did stop. I say the men stopped, but he didn't. He will move anywhere. 